If you've worked on Azure infrastructure projects for any meaningful length of time, you will definitely have come across this product called Azure NetApp Files, or ANF for short. Fundamentally, it's a different way of doing storage in Azure, especially useful if you're presenting shared volumes across to different infrastructure services on Azure using protocols like uh, SMB and NFS. And if you're coming more from the on-premises world, you probably, like myself, have a bit of history in building private clouds with on-premises technologies from the likes of NetApp. I've got fond memories of building private clouds using what was called converged infrastructure on-premises. So there used to be things like flex pods where you had a combination of Cisco networking, Cisco servers, and then NetApp providing the storage. And there was a transition period from physical disks to all flash arrays and NetApp had things like the FAS 9000 arrays. Anyway, not to take a trip down memory lane in this video, but um, maybe like myself, you've had NetApp files in the peripheral um, of your workings on Azure for a while. Uh, and recently I've had the opportunity to go a little bit deeper on the networking side. So I thought I'd capture really my learnings for my own reference and maybe it's useful for other people. So this page basically shows what I talked about. Yeah, you create a, a, a NetApp um, capacity pool in Azure and we'll go through some of this in the portal. And then you chop it up into volumes based on how many gigabytes you want, etc. And then fundamentally that service and the volumes get injected into your virtual networks and they get injected with what this diagram shows as an ANF NIC, but ultimately you can reach it on an IP address and that's how you start accessing these volumes. You know, you map them based on IP address or FQDN and they're reachable to wherever your VNet is reachable to and from. So other peered VNets, on-prem, etc. And there's some caveats associated with that. Fundamentally, NetApp files access and some of the networking considerations are slightly different due to the fundamental reason that NetApp infrastructure in Azure is a bit different to a lot of other services. And you can see this in some of the wording in the documents, such as you know, Azure NetApp files is built on NetApp's bare metal infrastructure with ONTAP. ONTAP is the NetApp software that manages the storage solution, the merging of disks, etc. But this bare metal nature and the way it connects under the covers in Azure is different just to regular Azure virtual machines, for example, that live on hosts with fundamentally Hyper-V and connect to the Azure SDN natively, etc. So there's engineering work behind the scenes that allows NetApp to deeply integrate into the VNet. And we have a couple of different options when it comes to integrating the NetApp solution. And these are broken down into two distinct categories here. So there's the original basic network features. This is what was first available when the product came out. And this has some significant constraints around things like IP addresses. And also one of the ones that we'll focus on in this video is the ability for UDRs. So that's the ability for traffic out of this NIC, for example, going back to your client, to be controlled by a UDR, steer it to a certain place, like, like a firewall, for example. And um, standard features is kind of the more modern option and gives you a lot of benefits as tables like this show. And um, you can actually migrate from basic to standard. Maybe we'll show that in the video as well. You can kind of do that on the fly and that's a pretty quick process. But like I say, this is a, a very popular option because fundamentally there's lots of other services in Azure which can leverage the way in which NetApp exposes volumes and the pricing model and performance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it augments all of the other storage options you've got available to you in Azure. As this document shows, there's solution plays here, as it were, with you know, VDI, HPC, SAP, VMware. So like I say, this, this story increases the chances that you're going to come across ANF. Right, let's flip to a more format that you might associate with this channel, which is we've got our diagram and we've got our topology and we're going to explain it, show you some of the behavior here. But again, just to get our bearings, this is the topology. So we've got a hub virtual network. In the hub, we've got Express Route Gateway, which is attached to on-prem via 
connection to a circuit. There's my on-prem over there. I've got an Azure firewall in my hub and I've got a UDR that steers traffic for my spoke range to that firewall. So that UDR matches that spoke range exactly. So it overrides the system route and steers traffic from the gateway to the firewall. And as you know, for all virtual machines, etc., in that spoke VNet, the traffic would flow to the VM and then you configure the associated UDRs or VNet uh, BGP root propagation to steer traffic back to the firewall, get symmetrical flows, happy days. Also in this spoke, I've got my use of ANF. So I've deployed my ANF service. And when you deploy a volume, as we'll see, you get to choose what subnet. This subnet becomes delegated for the use of ANF to inject that NIC that we saw earlier into. And I've got an example of a volume using basic networking, an example of a volume using standard networking, and we'll see the difference in behavior in respect to honoring this UDR here. But before we even go there, let's sort of show this in the portal because there's some really interesting way in which the SDN layer, the VNet layer and system routes interact with that ANF subnet. So first things first, if you're not familiar with the NetApp experience in Azure, it's probably good to show how that integrates. So even though this is plugging into the NetApp architecture and the ONTAP software, it's fully integrated into the portal. And I have to say for someone just experiencing this for the first time, it's an extremely seamless uh, integration. So we can see here, I've got my account and then I've got the various tiers of how we split up the service. I've got my capacity pool and you can see I've got my two volumes there, basic volume and a standard volume. And they are both just enabled for NFS. You can make them dual protocol if you want, if you need uh, SMB. You see, I've got the um, IP addresses there, .164 for my basic volume and uh, .165. So you can coexist them both in the same subnet. You can also you know, punch a hole somewhere else. If you've got another spoke VNet, you can have the same NetApp files account manifest in volumes in different delegated subnets. That's also possible. The next thing I'd like to show you, and probably the most important thing to internalize, uh, which makes ANF networking a little bit different. So if I look at this virtual machine in my hub VNet, it's got the IP address 10.10.3.4. You see here, I've got my virtual machine. There's the NIC with the IP address. I click on the NIC, show you the effective routes for the NIC. If you didn't know ANF, what would you expect to see? Well, you would expect that this NIC on the VM in the hub learns about the spoke VNet 192.168.2.0 slash 24 as a system route. And you can see it does here, 10.168.2.0 VNet peering. That's the system route learned by Azure, right? That's one of the things we know about Azure networking is it works um, at a learning level based on the side of ranges you allocate your VNet address space. Like subnets are not learned. And that's very critical when it comes to steering your traffic left and right. You know, when you have, for example, gateway subnet UDRs, you can match them to the system route of the VNet side of range to overwrite them. You don't have to overwrite every subnet. What's interesting about NetApp is look at this second route. 10.168.2.160 slash 28. Well, that's the range I've assigned to my NetApp subnet. So this is where it's different. And this is the main thing we will show where you've got to be sort of cognizant. And that is we are learning at a, a system root level via VNet peering in this case, because it's a hub VNet, the NetApp subnet range. And that doesn't normally happen in Azure. Now, let's say you were trying to come from an on-premises network, such as my on-prem network here, 10.4.0.4 is my VM on-prem over express route into your express route gateway and then funnel the traffic between that gateway and ANF via a firewall. There's now two things we have to think about, right? Firstly, it's, is this UDR going to work? So this is a classic UDR we talked about earlier. Is that UDR going to get my traffic to ANF? 
On the return path, is ANF capable of respecting a UDR, as shown here, pointing on prem back at the firewall to override BGP route learnt from the gateway? Is ANF capable of respecting the UDR in the reverse direction? Well, putting together what we have understood so far, we will now see that traffic when it comes into the gateway and gets directed by this UDR, that slash 24 UDR is a, a greater, uh, longer prefix match than the slash 28 system route that is leaking out effectively into the gateway. So even with that UDR configured, traffic is going to flow and bypass our firewall and go straight to our basic volume, straight to our standard volume and return directly as well. Or to be more accurate, uh, as we know, traffic when it leaves Azure to Express Route goes directly back to the, uh, the MSEE as we've covered numerous times. So let's just show that in action. First thing is my gateway UDR. As you see, I've just got the slash 24 route pointing at my Azure firewall IP address. So we can just look at the, the ingress path first. Let's verify that when traffic comes into Azure, that UDR actually is not effective. All right, so on my on-prem client here, the Windows box on-prem, you see I've run a couple of commands to verify my access to ANF. You see on here, on the, the command line using the NFS client you can install, I've mapped to the E drive 2.165, standard volume, which is my ANF standard, 2.164 basic vol to the G drive. And if I open up here, I can see I've got the G drive, the D drive mapped and some historical ones here when I've been playing around. But fundamentally, we can see we've got access over NFS from on-prem into ANF. And all of that is happening even though we have this UDR configured. And why is that happening? Well, it's for the reason we said earlier, right? The system route is overriding our UDR. System route is meaning traffic goes straight to the volumes and when the volumes respond, they just go straight back. Okay, what if we don't want that? What if we don't want traffic to ANF bypassing our firewall from on-prem or from anywhere else in Azure for that matter? What do we need to do? Well, we need to get traffic going to Azure firewall in the ingress direction for ANF. And we need to get traffic coming back from ANF to go to Azure Firewall. So the first problem is easy to fix, right? We just go to our UDR and we add a more specific route for the ANF subnet as well. So give it a random name, IP address, and we're going to say 10.168.2.160 slash 28. Next top is my Azure Firewall. So add that. We also need to take care of the return path. So we need to go to our route tables, find the one for NetApp. And you see, I've already pre-configured this. I've got a route here, 10.4.0.0 slash 16, which is the prefix I'm learning from on-prem. So this, this virtual network is learning this slash 16 route from the gateway. So for me to override that, I need a route that matches it saying go back to the firewall. So I just need to associate that now. So if I go to here, associate my ANF subnet. Okay, so now I should be sending traffic for the slash 28 to my firewall and traffic from ANF should be coming back to my firewall. Based on everything we've said so far in this video, you should be able to guess now what's going to happen in respect to these two different volumes because they're using different networking options. So with my UDR updated on the ANF subnet, I've reran the command on my client here to mount that standard volume 2.165. And you can see it is successful. So that traffic's coming in from on-prem over express route, going to the gateway subnet, getting dropped on the wire. Gateway subnet UDR picks it up. This has got an additional slash 28 in now. So it overrides the system route sends it to Azure Firewall. I've got an allow all policy on there. Sends it to the ANF standard volume, processes the packet, allows me to mount the volume, 
the UDR on the ANF subnet, which is compatible with standard volumes, says, OK, to return the traffic to this range, go back to the firewall. Firewall sees the return path and then delivers it to express route. And that works. If I come back over here and I try to run the command to mount my basic volume, you see I get a network error. And fundamentally, the, the network path's not working. Let me just change that drive letter just to make sure it's not a, a client side causing that quick timeout. Yeah, I think it was. But even when I use a different drive letter, you can see it's hanging. Uh, and the reason for that is, as I guess you can uh, already work out, and kind of implied is that, let's do this one in red, that traffic's coming in over express route, going to the gateway. The gateway is sending the traffic due to the updated UDR to Azure Firewall. Azure Firewall's delivering the traffic to ANF basic volume, but because basic volumes don't honor UDRs due to some platform caveats associated with that earlier networking method, the traffic cannot go back to Azure Firewall so it comes back asymmetrically and it doesn't work, right? The firewall is not allowing the traffic. We can jump into here. I've got log analytics ingesting logs from my firewall over here on the right hand side. If I run the command for show me the network rule matches, show me matching dot 165 last 30 minutes, I can see traffic here coming in from my on-prem IP going to the, that particular standard volume and that's working. If I change it to the 164 address, I can also see traffic coming in, but we're not seeing the reverse path. We know now from my knowledge that ANF is not able to respect the UDR and return the traffic in, in the right place. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. Definitely check out this document. There's lots of other caveats associated with standard versus basic networking on ANF. Lots of reasons why you should use standard, and I'm sure you are if it's uh, you know not for legacy reasons. Maybe one thing worth mentioning is you can move from basic to standard and that's quite seamless once your subscription has been allowed for this feature. So maybe I can quickly show you that. Uh, here's my list of volumes. Here's my basic volume here. Like I say, I have been have followed the documents to be allowed for this uh, particular feature. But you see here now I've got a change networking features option and I can change it from, uh, from basic to standard. It says, look, this volume is going to be upgraded. Click save. And this happens relatively quickly. I'll, I'll show this in real time. See, there we go. That took yeah, a few seconds. So now that I've updated this volume here, the one that wasn't working, to standard, that should now work, right? The dot .164 address should work. So let's verify that. So back on my client, I'm going to mount the 164 basic vol. So it's still called basic vol, even though I've moved it to standard. Let's mount that to the end drive. So straight away, completely different behavior. The standard volume is compatible with UDRs. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed a slightly different video. I've enjoyed learning a bit more about ANF and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.